Welcome to this Bespoke Stairlifts installation manual. In this video, we will cover all the stages of the installation process, from pre-installation checks, track fitting, through to cleanup and demonstration. By following the steps in this video guide and the Infinity installation manual, you'll be able to quickly and efficiently install a bespoke stairlift to the highest standard and reduce future faults and callouts. Stage one. Installation check and unboxing kit. Using the installation drawing in your installation kit, assess the staircase, making sure all measurements and dimensions are correct. Check for any obstacles that may hinder installation, such as low ceilings, bulkheads, skirting and dado rails, these may or may not be on your drawing. When unboxing the installation kit, make sure to check that all items on the list are included. And you have all your tools to hand. When unpacking the rails and bases, take care not to damage the paintwork. Organise the bases with the tags provided, starting with one at the foot of the stair. Clarify with the customer any existing wires or pipe work so no damage is caused when installing the stairlift. Stage 2. Track installation. Fit the 8mm grub screws to each of the leg bases, making sure they do not project into the inside of the base. Then place the bases in the position shown in the installation drawing. Starting at the top of the stairs, place each rail section on the stairs in the correct leg base. Using the cable feeder, Start by feeding the two core charging cable through the lower tubing of each rail section, starting at the top and working down. Ensure a minimum of 150 mm of cable at each end. Adjust the rail sections and bases to approximate height using the installation drawing. Gently tighten the grub screws on each base. These will need to be adjusted later. Then, working from the bottom, fit the first two sections together, making sure to grease the male part of each joint. Finally, pin together the rails using the rolled steel pins. Be careful not to snag the two core charging cable. Repeat the process on each joining section until the rail is level and fully assembled. Take time in cleaning away any excess grease. Once the track is in the appropriate position, fit and secure jointing bolts to fasten each rail together. Level each rail section by untightening the grub screws in the bases. Ensure the track is level and the bases sit on the steps. Then re-tighten. Repeat this on each section. Once the stairlift rail is complete, double check all rail heights, clearances and angles, and that the lower and upper rails are vertically level. Finally, ensure rail to wall measurements match the installation drawing. When you are happy that the stairlift is in the correct position, individually loosen the grub screws on each of the base collars and secure each leg base to the staircase using the preferred fixing method. Failure to loosen the grub screws when fixing may cause the rail to move. Tighten the grub screws back up and repeat on each leg plate, ensuring the rail is still level. Stage 3 – Power Supply Q 
Firstly, determine the most suitable location for the charger unit next to the power supply. Pre-drill the holes to fix the charging unit to the wall, taking care the unit is level. Leave sufficient length on the power output to enable easy connection to the rail charge points. The power supply unit should not be plugged into the mains until the rail charge points have been connected. Stage 4 – Carriage Assembly and Programming First, unpack all the pre-assembled units from their packaging, taking care not to place the carriage on the floor, avoiding damage. To install the batteries, first remove the front panel by unscrewing the four main screws. Once you've inserted the batteries, consult your instruction manual, making sure the battery circuit is correct. Next, insert the long loading bar into the top skate of the carriage and insert the small cone stopper into the bottom rail tube. At the top of the stairs, lift the carriage with the loading strap and insert the loading bar into the top rail tube. Slowly run the carriage along until the small cone is through the bottom skate. Once the carriage is securely located on the rail, it is safe to let go of the loading strap. If you have chosen the extra of a temporary remote, locate the PCB cable on the rear of the carriage, feed through to the front and carefully connect the temporary remote. Once this is connected, hold down buttons 1 and 2 on the main board and switch on the main switch. Keep these buttons pressed on for 5 seconds. Then the temporary remote is ready to use. Now that your temporary remote is connected, you can use this to move the carriage to a preferred position for better accessibility. Once there, switch off the carriage by the main switch and remove the temporary remote. This task can alternatively be carried out by using the winding handle provided. Insert the winding handle into the hole in the left side panel of the carriage. Locate the manual winding nut and turn the handle slowly in the required direction. The next step is to start connecting the individual sections of the carriage. First, fasten the armrest to the unit using four M8 by 12 cap head screws. Apply Loctite to each thread to ensure a secure fix. Now rotate the seat mount outwards for access to the screw holes underneath. Place the seat in position and fasten using two M8 by 30 and two M8 by 35. It is important to consult your installation manual to make sure the correct screws are in the correct location, again using Loctite on each thread. Finally, connect the joystick cable to the PCB cable, making sure that the two cables are free to move as the seat rotates. Return to the rail and fit the charge points to both the top and bottom. Connecting the core cable at both ends, use the diagram on page 18 of the installation guide to ensure correct polarity. Once you are happy with the positions, fasten the final end stop brackets at the top and bottom of the rail. When placing the final end stops and charging points, please ensure the lower skate of the carriage does not touch the floor before engaging with the final end stop. This could result in damage to the skate mechanism. If the distance is incorrect, you may need to adjust the charging terminal. When the charging terminals are engaged, make sure there is only 5mm to 10mm gap between the final end stop and the lower skate, as overrunning the charging terminals may result in the carriage losing its memory. Finally, turn on the charger. Closely follow the diagram shown to ensure the correct polarity of the charging terminals when connected to the charging cable. To begin programming, start with calibrating the stair lift for either a left or right installation. Open the access panel on the right side of the carriage to access the main board. Then turn off the unit. Dip switch number 2 should be in the ON position for a right-hand installation or OFF for a left-hand installation. All other dip switches should be in the OFF position. Before switching on the stair lift, 
Press and hold micro switch one and then turn on the unit. Continue holding until the board stops flashing. The stair lift should now be calibrated. To program the stair lift, first move it down to the bottom charging terminal, then stop the stair lift. It will automatically stop on the charge point when the terminal is turned on. If the stair lift has an extra mid charging point, move the stair lift to this point, then stop. Finally, move the stair lift upstairs to the final charging terminal and follow these steps. Switch off the stair lift. Wait 10 seconds. Switch the stair lift on and wait 5 seconds. This will have fully programmed your stair lift. Stage 5 Programming the remote. The next steps must be followed precisely and carefully to ensure the remote is properly programmed and linked to the stair lift. First, turn on the lift. Next, hold micro switch 3 until the LED stops flashing, then release. Now press either button on the remote until the PCB LED flashes. Your first remote is now fully linked. If there are any additional remote controls, Firstly, press the micro switch 3 briefly. Then, press either button on the additional remote until the PCB LED flashes again. Stage 6 – Safety and Troubleshooting Here we are going to check the stopping safety features. First, move the stair lift to a convenient position. Now run the stair lift, placing your hands in front of each sensor, individually running the lift both up and down the rails. Should the overspeed governor engage, follow these steps to reset the system. Turn off the stair lift. Then, using the manual winding handle, wind the stair lift in the upward direction. The OSG arm should become loose from the rail. Move the OSG arm into the neutral position. Then push the first and second PCB buttons. Then finally, reprogram the stair lift again by repeating the programming process. Stage 7 – Clean up and finishing touches As many of your customers will be elderly, make sure you clean away any tools, packaging and rubbish before giving the customer a demonstration. Make sure to hoover in all the areas you've worked in, cleaning away any dust and dirt. Finally, add the finishing touches by clearing up your cables using trunking and adding any rail furniture, such as leg base covers and leg caps. Stage 8 – Demonstration Making sure the user is well out of the way of the stair lift with a clear view. Demonstrate all the operational functions of the stair lift, including the seat, seat belt, footrest, and directional controls. When all of these have been covered, move on to the safety features of the stair lift, going over these points twice if you feel it is necessary. Once the user is familiar with the stair lift features, ask them to operate the stair lift to the top of the stairs. Now check all features when at the top of the stairs. If everything is OK, head back down again, making sure all features at the bottom of the stairs are working correctly taking particular care to ensure the stair lift is charging correctly. Finally, go through all relevant paperwork with the customer, making sure all features are fully understood. Once you are confident everything is understood, have all your documentation signed off. We hope you have found your bespoke stair lift guide helpful. Thank you for watching.